Hello everyone, this is Pedro from Pythalista with one more video. In the past I published a video about Delta Tables, which is an open source file format uh, which allows uh, ACID compliance in data lakes. So that's the fundamental infrastructure uh, that Databricks uses or any other uh, that they call Data Lake House, where you can have in the same data lake uh, all the good benefits of a asset transaction as you have in a traditional warehouse and then also be able to work with unstructured data and files in at scale so but this video is not specifically about delta tables i want to talk about delta live tables and that's important uh, here so data live table is a proprietary feature of databricks and it's not open source hence it can you can only use live tables in Databricks platform. So if you read the so if you read the definition of data live tables here from the Azure documentation of Databricks, so it says that data, data live tables manages uh, how your data is transformed based on queries you define for each processing steps. So you can also help to enforce data quality with data live tables expectations, which allow you to define uh, expect data quality and specify how to handle records that fail those expectations. When it comes to data engineer, the reality is not simple. What you usually have here is like a lot of sources and then you have transformations that goes in different directions and there's a lot of dependencies that happens in, in transformations to deliver uh, a curated product to the client or the final client, either like stream analytics or BI reporting or data science. And if you wanted to do some level of best practices um, data engineer, you would have to include a lot in a data pipeline or a data engineering infrastructure. You need to have like on top of version control uh, deployment infrastructure, you also need to have quality checks, governance. Uh, and then the, the hardest part is to create all the data definition languages. And usually that's done in a classical data engineer using store procedures. And you also have to kind of orchestrate everything, create dependencies as you, you saw in that previous picture. So which table will depend on the other and then you have to visualize and usually you have to draw diagrams so there's a lot of work that's done uh, in a data pipeline which is not related uh, per se the transformation itself but it's all infrastructure around like that you need to do like backfill handling so what's the products of data engineers are doing and that's what Delta Live Tables is doing. So they are trying to they trying to make it easy uh, to manage and build more reliable batch and streaming or both or one or the other. So to deliver high quality data uh, and then have like, everything tracked and easily done. So the data engineer can focus on the ETL, which is the transformation and everything that like, the most complicated part of writing store procedures uh, is taken care of. Like, you just need to write. And the way Databrick does is when you create a live table, you can reference to other um, previous table in the lineage uh, and then you will see when i when i give you a demo another thing is we you the data live tables leverage uh spark autoloader which makes easy to receive streaming or batching data in a data lake setting data live tables are built on top of data lake standards where you can also have the est compliance so without further um delay let's go to a demo so what i have here is um i have a um, azure storage here where imagine that a scenario that i'm gonna receive files in this folder of some transactions and for that um i've already mounted as you can see here 
in my data explorer, I've already mounted uh, that data bricks folder. Can you see customers? So which means that everything that I drop here um, in my data lake, Azure will be reflected in my uh, Databricks file system. It's just like I, I done a video if you wanted to learn how to do it. I'll put the link here on top. You just can click, but this is just focus on this pipeline of live tables. So in my exercise, I've created a Python uh, program that's going to create those files here. And then we can see how Autoloader works and feed all the pipeline with live tables. So first thing, let me just run one here to uh, show how it works. So for example, if I run this program here, so that's going to create, I think, 20 records um, and dump a CSV on the sales. Yeah, that's the one. So you can see here. So these are fake transactions that I'm creating with a Python library called Faker. So I'm gonna create some non-compliant uh, because I'll do some data quality here. So let's create those. So I'm just gonna create some transactions where the unit price is negative. And then in my pipeline, I'm just going to reject those and put in a quarantine table. And then you understand later. So let's create those transactions. And then create some other transactions here. I've created like 20 times 360 transactions. And 20 of those transactions are not compliant. Just save this. Yeah, I have some negative transactions. So let's go to the, um, just to see if in the data bricks, um, I'm going to get in that. I'm just querying that folder that I mounted and see if the transactions are there. Should be 60 transactions. Just like what I'm doing is just, I'm just querying those three files here in one, creating a view for that. Yeah, so that's that's it, that's 60 records. So let's go to the uh, bulk of this video, which is the uh, live tables. So the way you do it, I'm just giving an example here in SQL. So you first, uh, use the creating streaming live tables. I'm just calling that raw sales. So the what I'm doing here, I'm just the first step in the pipeline, which you can call your bronze table, which you are ingesting raw data. I can use this um, function here in SQL data bricks, which is called cloud files, which is pretty much like implement under the hood the auto loader. So at an auto loader is a, um, it's kind of like a, a daemon that's watching that folder and every file that gets dropped there gets loaded. And then there is like um, a mechanism that reads those files. And then it, it, it tracks this in a checkpoint and you, that file only loads once. So that's the first step. So, if I run this cell here, nothing happens. So it just says that the data live tables query is synthetically valid. But to run this query, you do have to create a Delta live tables pipeline, which I will do in a minute. So the second step here, I'm gonna create like that silver layer. And then the silver layer on the medallion architecture is where when you do some data qualities, you do some also enrichment of the um, your pipeline, your process here. You, you kind of like clean the data that you don't want. For example, uh, I create this streaming table that reads from the raw table. And then I put here a constraint. You, and then if you worked with the Python, library called uh, Great Expectations. It's kind of like similar how it works. So it's inspired on that one. So in this case, I put a constraint and I call it, I put some comment here, a unit price should be positive. And then I use the keyword here, expect, which is like a function. And then I say that the unit price column should be greater or equals to zero. So it cannot be negative. So, and then I can put like a comment here on violation 
I want to drop a row. So I don't want those rows to be on my silver table. And I'm also creating like a new column called like full name, which I concatenate first name and last name. And then what's important here, um, I can create, if I use the stream, which means I'm reading from my stream, which is the data live, the raw table. And then I have to use the keyword live. And then that's, I'm telling to Tata Bricks that there is a lineage in between those two tables. Uh, and then the next step, I'm just gonna create now a quarantine table, which is also reads from the raw, but I'm just going to quarantine all the bad data for a later analysis. So I'm just going to create, it's very similar to that one, but just the opposite. So I'm just creating that stream live table quarantine sales. I'm putting that constraints, but I'm just saying instead of putting greater than or equals to zero, it's less than zero. And then I'm just put a comment and then I'm just also creating that column to just, I can replicate those two tables. And finally, I do like the final stage, which is a gold table, which is going to be used for business intelligence. And then I'm just going to create, and that table is not going to be streaming. That's going to be more like a materialized view. And in this case, I don't need to put um, create streaming. I just put uh, create a live table. And the difference is that this one's going to be a materialized view. Uh, and then I don't need to use streaming. I just put the keyword live dot clean sales. And then I'm, what I'm doing here, I'm just grouping by name and then sum the total price. And that's about it. So once I have all the declarative SQL, I need now to create a pipeline. To create a pipeline, I come here, click Delta. And it's very simple. Just put create a pipeline. You just give a name. I'm just gonna get uh, Delta Live Tables um, Sales Demo. Uh, you can have like trigger or continuous. In this case, I'm gonna to use triggered because I just wanted to run it as a batch. So a path, you give the path of your notebook. In my case is DLT SQL sample. And then you have to give a storage location where you want to save the pipeline and all the, the data and metadata that's going to be generated in this pipeline. In this case, I'm giving that location here in my DBFS. Uh, and then the target schema is live tables. If I go to my SQL endpoint um, here, uh, that's the schema, live tables. So that's it. Okay, and then I just leave the defaults here for compute. I'm just gonna have um, cluster and then that's it you create and then once you create to start the process and create uh all the tables and the relationship uh i just press start and that's it i just need to wait a little bit until it starts i'm gonna pause the video and then i'll return when it's finished all right uh, i have a failure here I think I should not have that. I'm just gonna comment it out this spot. And then I think it should work now. I'm just gonna restart again. It's running for four minutes. It's doing well. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just gonna maximize here to fit viewport. It's running my pipeline. As I said, there is six records that was written in raw sales. We should have live 40 here and 20 here. So that's the beauty of the live um, live table. So it, it um, create that table here and then it uh, wrote like 60 records. And if I say quality, I, have, I haven't put any restriction on that one. I'm just gonna write everything. And then 60 record were written.
And then if I go to these um, two paths here, the clean sales is the one that I, I put a restriction to be dropped. And then 20 records were dropped. And then I say it failed records. And those are the records where the unit is negative. Um, and but if I go on the quarantine, those uh, 20 records were written, so that's the opposite. So total is 80, and then the sales products. I'm just gonna aggregate and, and write everything uh, that's upstream. So the next one, I'm just gonna refresh that, and then I should have the three tables create or four tables created here, I think. Um, in the live tables, yeah. So and then I can query those in the live tables schema. I've just called live tables because if you remember in the pipeline, I put the don't get confused with the live schema of the data live tables in whatever schema uh, or database I created here in my Hive um, SQL endpoint. So and then I can query select. Uh, live tables, um, uh, uh, first one, the raw sales. So, and that's it, it's just a normal table in your data warehouse, your lake house, if you like. And that's pretty much it. So to finalize, let's just this query finish running. There we go. To finish this off, let's create more records. So let's say uh, another 40 records arrived and they are compliant here because I don't have that uh, intentional error here. So I see two new files arrived in my storage. So what I can do here, uh, because I'm running in development, but if I'm gonna to switch that to production, and I can put a schedule um, that can run that, uh, or I can do that as continuous. So I think I can switch that to continuous mode, which is going to run all the time. So in this case here, I'm just going to run again. Uh, I'm just going to leave in development because in development, I these things are not shut down. Uh, we'll still make the cluster run uh if i want to lose any debug so if i click start so because it's based on auto loader it's going to only load new files because those three files in the beginning are already being recorded as loaded so let's do it so why it's loading um i can have a look here at the pipelines and then you can see that all the data is saved here at these tables and then you can see that's a delta table i have the parquet file here and all the delta logs here for my tables all right it's finally running as i said that's only should only run 40 um records which is yeah that's it and then in this case, everything is going to be clean and nothing will be quarantined on this time. Yeah, that's it. 40 written. So no errors. If I just, it's completed, dollar quality. So failures, there was no failures. All right, so that's it uh, for today. So hopefully you liked the video. If you have any questions, please put in the comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Click the bell to receive notifications and like the video. See you next time.